remember Pac-Man? Yeah, the little yellow ball who's been the main mascot for Namco, now merged with Bandai for 41 years now. The fellow will always have a place in my heart since the days I played Pac-Man World 2 on my GameCube. I didn't like the new reboot they gave him and all, though, as they made him an annoying high school kid, trying too hard to be cool. But that isn't the point. Before I start, it's obvious that I'm a Pac-Man fan. I originally played the original arcade game on World 2's arcade bonus area, which allowed you to play all of the classic games from the 80s. One day, I was chatting with my friend on Skype, who allegedly told me that he found a supposed version of Pac-Man, a ROM that was found and locked away in a safe in the back of an old arcade in some abandoned amusement park and extracted from a damaged PCB port. Honestly, I didn't believe him, but he gave me a link that I kept noted for a few days later, since I was busy with school at the time. Eventually, when I got home one late Friday, I hopped on my computer as I was originally going to play more Left 4 Dead 2 or Quake Live. However, I was reminded of the link my friend gave me thanks to the trusty notepad file I saved to my desktop. I opened the link up and was taken to a browser page. The page itself had the story and stated that players who were able to finish the original arcade game board suffered severe psychological and occasionally physiological trauma up to and including death of the subject and that the ROM's effect is significantly reduced. I put my hand over my face and corpsed thinking this was all going to be another Lavender Town Syndrome hoax, but I digressed and clicked the link, leading to where I could play the game on my browser, so I didn't have to risk downloading it and getting any creepy viruses, I guess. The game loaded with a corrupted ROM startup, accompanied by loud static, before displaying the words, insert coin. I noticed it briefly flashed from coin to soul for about a split second now and then. I hit enter and started the game. The familiar maze board that many gamers probably remember displayed along with Pac-Man in the middle, where the fruit would usually appear. The little jingle that was stuck in my head as a child played, but it was really off. It started out normal before slowing down, then speeding up, and growing loud toward the end, while also going at a lower key. Once the jingle finished, I could move Pac-Man, presented by his iconic pizza shape. One thing I noticed was that I couldn't see any pellets, unless Pac-Man came into view in certain channels. I also occasionally saw a blue ghost roaming the maze. He had a sad face in the style of that of a jack-o'-lantern, almost reminding me of something out of Ghosts and Goblins, honestly. Munching pack dots played his usual waka-waka sound effect, but it was much deeper than usual. The ghost siren in the background was also slowed down. There were a few power pellets, as any Pac-Man game would have, of course. I ate one, and was briefly able to see a full view of the pack dots and the location of the ghosts. This did not allow me to eat them, however, as when I touched the ghost, I simply died. Dying resulted in one of three things. The screen would zoom in on where Pac-Man had died and spin around while his death sound would play but then condort into static. The screen would freeze before restarting, or the sprite of the ghost would flash upon the screen, along with a loud screech. Needless to say, it pissed me off. I eventually cleared the first board, and the next level started. This time, there was a red ghost who had a sinister smile. If he saw Pac-Man, 
he would charge down the channel you were on of the maze with an obnoxious buzzing sound. I should also add the fact that the level counter would occasionally flash to names which I presume were the new ghosts that were added each time. The first level was named Blindy, which I can only assume is because he moves around randomly, like Clyde. This time, it was Screamy. Judging from his AI's behavior, I think the name is well-fitting. If you get out of his line of sight, or while he was charging, would make things a bit easier. Only last thing to mention is occasionally his sprite flickered between his rather sinister bony grin to the original 8-bit sprite of Blinky, the Red Ghost in Namco's, or if you're American, Midway, original arcade cabinets. The next level introduced a much more annoying ghost named Slendy, and as his name implies, he acted somewhat like Slender Man in a way. He would teleport around the maze at random, and even pop up right in front of your face. All music and sound stopped if he was in your view. If you stayed in his line of sight, he would start getting an angry look on his face, and then eventually turn yellow. At this point, if he does turn yellow, he will more than likely teleport on top of you. The next level introduced Old One, who happened to be pink. This was probably the worst of all, as he would follow Pac-Man and face through the walls of the board. His appearance was probably the most interesting compared to the other ghosts. He had strange tentacles, like an octopus or a squid, and he had some strange spot on top of his head, almost like some sort of gemstone. Also, unlike the other three, he was the only one lacking a mouth completely. The fifth level was when things started getting weirder, though. The walls of the maze started disappearing. No, not even kidding. They were vanishing, and I could go through the board freely. It became more annoying this way, considering I couldn't stay straight, and the ghost got an advantage. After clearing this board, I noticed the next level was exactly the same. I can only presume the rest of the game was like this now. So I ended my game here. Dying results in a screen asking, play again, along with a countdown. Accepting just resets the game, while letting the timer run out, simply printed out game over in white text. If the latter of the three results I mentioned earlier regarding Pac-Man's death occurred, you'd get a jump scare of Screamy with a screech when the timer reached a certain point. Afterward, there would be a red screen with insert coin, occasionally flickering to please help. Eventually, I closed the game out and went to bed. Honestly, I never knew a classic could be given a dark twist. At least not like this. I really hope this was not a real game. For if it was, then I really feel guilty for those who had to play this. Update. I had recently come back to this game after I saw this community's leader, Mudahar, played it. It had apparently been updated just recently. The following text was as followed. Report, October 16th, 2015. Additional repairs were completed on original arcade PCB sections, N through 1, through R through 6. Technician casualties. M. Harper fell into catatonic state during testing, declared brain dead. New ROM compiled. Noticeable changes. Unknown. End report. Most of the updates did list these supposed technicians who did edits to the PCB board. All either died, some way of some cause, 
This, however, caught me, as it didn't list as many details as the others. So out of curiosity, I decided to play the ROM. Playing through levels 1 to 5 weren't too much different. The sounds seemed to be altered slightly, though. Mainly Pac-Man's death, where it would sometimes play halfway before turning to white noise. Here, it only played half of the sound bite over and over like a broken record. The screech on the jump scare was also changed to high-pitched white noise. When I got to level 6, though, is when things got interesting. Upon entering this level, the walls of the maze were back. I began munching my way along the channels of pack dots. It was quiet, though. The ghost siren wasn't playing in the background. I was rather suspicious and continued onward. There weren't even ghosts in the little ghost box. After munching a certain number of dots led to something unexpected. I heard this loud, higher-pitched waka waka, eating a power pellet I found out what exactly this thing was. It was another Pac-Man, but it was dark gray. I wasn't exactly freaked out, though, until after eating another set amount of dots. All the text boxes with score, lives, and whatnot changed to run. What sounded like the eyeball sound, what you hear after you eat a ghost in the arcade version, as it runs back to the box in the middle. At a deeper pitch, started playing. The dark Pac-Man started moving faster. Eventually it caught up with me and the screen started glitching, showing several sprites and letters. Pretty much the original level 256, taken to a whole new level of weirdness. After this, the screen cleared up, and I was taken to... a first-person view? What the hell? The graphics were pretty much like Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. Pack dots laid around, and I couldn't tell what exactly was happening. Eventually I came across... Pac-Man? What exactly was going on here? He was a 2D sprite with about four different directions, much like the set games above. He seemed to be wandering around the maze. I was confused and pondered to myself a bit. Then it hit me. I was a ghost. I decided my natural instinct was to catch the yellow orb, per usual. It seemed he was running away from me. But even if that was the case, it was freaky seeing the damn thing coming forward with wide open jaws. Even if it's his simple pizza appearance upon touching him three times, the game window flashed to black and simply stayed that way. Upon closing, I can't help but remember, wonder, what could this mean? Could this mean the ghosts were past Pac-Mans? Or even worse, past players. You can find a few versions of this game on the internet if you wish to play it. Probably the most popular place resides on Game Jolt. However, I warn you, you may not want to play it. I still love Pac-Man to this day, and the original arcade game especially. But I never thought there was a darker tale to this maze. Thank you.